Hey everybody, I think I think we're live. What what are all these models I've got going on here? Who who let us go live when I'm so uh, obviously confused and not ready? I I blame Aaron. I don't know. He's not here. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that that's the best person to blame. I think it was that was straight up Aaron. I blame <laughs> him for everything else. So oh, that's fair. What's one more thing? <laughs> Hey, welcome to Friday, everybody. Welcome to uh, SketchUp Live. Thanks for joining us. We are, as uh, as always, very excited to to uh, jump in with the community. And who knows? Uh, maybe just hey, what, what what do you want to talk about today, Jody? I, I got you know. Jeez. So Obi Wan's done. Yep. And you're not watching the Marvel stuff, so True, man, maybe no TV yet. stuff. Are you going to go see Thor as soon as you uh, go on your vacation? I probably won't see it while I'm uh, away, but it definitely looks fun. Uh, I I hope it is as fun as what Taika has brought us before, so we'll see. Yeah. Going back to the Star Wars thing, I'm excited to see what Taika does with Star Wars. Very much. Um. So, are you going to re are you going to re re remodel that cherry you're orbiting around there, or are you mm. going to do something new and original? We're going to do a something new, less original, because we'll be modeling uh, a, an example of a chair that I I um, found online that I thought looked pretty interesting, and uh, I just wanted to have this one as available as a reference because I have actually built this rocking chair, built it in real life. Um, so I'll, I'll use this as some basic measurements, but I like, yeah, do, do I like that. that you've got, you've got center points for the arc that is the, the rocker. Oh yeah. It makes it looks like it's, you're going to animate the whole thing. Maybe here's the chair. And if we don't build exactly this, which I'm sure we won't, cause we're just reference image, we'll build something inspired by this very close to if we can so that's that's what we're going to build today what do you think i like the sound of it i uh i wanted that to be a maloof so that whenever i said <laughs> maloof it would sound like i knew what i was talking about but i guess i'll just i'll just accept that it's not yeah, it's I, a ma, ma spoof it's a spoof of a maloof spoof, maloof spoof. a maloof spoof I like, I like, okay yeah although all right I think it's fairly different, but we, we, we can we can we can call it that. You can hallucinate it more if you yeah. want. <clears throat> well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we modeled a lamp, but I was throwing up a couple options, and several people voted for this as the as the version to model. So, so we're just bringing it back up and saying, "All right, let's let's come back around. We'll model it this week." Um, nice. So, just as a uh, shout out reminder please do uh please do comment and um you know what i am um, let me start presenting please do comment and there already are comments oh sweet well then keep it uh, coming mostly the, the first comment is from. is wanting to know what that uh free floating tool set you have is up there on the top left oh this beyond guy that, right here have... uh sure. i assume sure the this is most, the artisan most. tool set. This is uh, Fredo's uh, corner plugins, and these ones we'll just close out. We don't need them. But we are probably going to get into artisan to try and do a bit of the cushions and this uh, Fredo's corner tools. We'll hopefully use to round over some of these edges. I don't know if it'll work. We're going to. Um, find out mm. i don't know well it's fun fun to have exciting new uh exciting new experimental things experimental friday yeah look at this jody if we if i model this chair sort of looking straight like this it'll be different like then this looks you know oh this is far more extreme much lot wider base all right let's get to it 
But yeah, let us know where you're coming in from. Let us know what uh, what's on your weekend agenda. What about you, Jody? It's going to be hot. I don't know how much uh, shop <laughs> time you're going to get. Yeah, I, uh, I've decided if I'm going to be in my shop at all, it's going to have to happen before noon because it's supposed to be Oy. hitting 100 both days yeah. and I got no AC in my shop or my house. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I may be maybe going to see Thor back to back performances just to get out of the out of the heat. <laughs> Man, okay. it's like we it's like we've got a we've got a, a, a quite a range here of locations. We got Poland, UK, oh. Israel, Hungary, and Newfoundland, and India. I don't feel like I can complain about heat whenever I talk, <laughs> talk to anyone from India. That's there's, there's, that's true. I have a I have it's a not friend a contest, that I go. Though. No, it's not. I have a, a friend that I go bouldering with that is from India, and he was just just back at the beginning of June. He said, first of all, the townies, I don't remember what town he's from. They don't, I mean, it's, it's they generally don't have air conditioning. It's just a foregone conclusion. And so what they end up doing is at night, they, so it's hot all day. And then as soon as the sun's not directly on their deck outside of their house, you know, their veranda, and they go out there and they pour water on it because it's concrete and it's super hot. They pour water in it to cool it down, and then they just sleep out there overnight. They go out and sleep on their on their patio, yeah. which they said isn't that bad. It's just the, the middle of the day stinks. Yeah. And since they've been living in the U.S. for years now, they're completely spoiled. They did not like it. Uh, Sorry. Spoiled. Didn't mean spoiled to, didn't mean to heat, heat you up there. Um, <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do this weekend? Oh, <clears throat> we're prepping. I am gonna drive down to even hotter place down to Arizona. So, go see my folks. <clears throat> Jody, and understandably, always gives me a hard time when I'm like, I mean, of course you do it in the summer, but yeah, drive down to southern Arizona in the uh, middle of the summer. Seems sounds yeah. a little bit broken there. <laughs> yeah, you can and you could you could swap out Utah or <clears throat> Nevada, but driving going to any of those places in the middle of August is insane to me. <laughs> oh. I I left the heat of Oklahoma for a reason. So a good I, reason. My mom understands that I will come visit in the spring or the fall, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, to make it even um, growing up again this summer we would always do you know camping trips multi-day camping trips and hiking in uh, the hills around southern Arizona in the summer it's just so hot but growing up there sort of like oh well let's just that's what, that's what you didn't know any better available. yeah now you know now you know now better you and you know. still go back true so um, andy got a, got a new electric car ooh. from from work so that's kind of cool i can say so he said he's driving all over in that thing i totally get behind that because these days my uh my truck is getting 17 miles to the gallon whenever i'm driving it like a baby yeah i'd love love to have an electric truck You're taking your non-electric Subaru for this trip? Oh, taking our non-electric Kia. Yes, indeed. Oh. We're going to be... I, you know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? I don't know. Get you of having too many kids, so got to have something <laughs> that can haul that, her, that herd. Yep. Well, just to, to oh. uh, talk for a second about what I'm drawing up some reference images, and I'm doing this again based on the the, the rocking chair I've built in the past. Um, if you've if you've looked into rocking chair design, if, into um, what makes a comfortable rocking chair, there's there's some ranges, and there's there's you can find some good articles out there about people who kind of will talk about different sizes. Um, you can make a you, you don't have to make custom rocking chairs for everybody. In my experience, I make this rocking chair uh, fairly large, and everybody, even my kids and my family, comfortably 
enjoy it. Um, but you can, there are some people out there who will talk about kind of essentially the ratio of the rockers and the radius they have and the height of the seat or the legs. And that ratio is where you can kind of play around towards really customizing towards the height of, of somebody who's five foot versus seven foot tall. Um, generally though, you can make a rocker with a radius. The general thought is somewhere between, let's say 38 to 42 inches radius. Uh, 42 obviously being bigger, so you have just a bit more of a casual, less rock, and 38 being on the on the end of sort of if you want a little more. It's not going to be like a huge difference, but so I'm going to make mine with, let's just put it somewhere in there, like 41. I'm going to make a seat height of generally 15 inches. That's a little higher than some people uh, make it, but... I tend to design things that are for me, and since I'm on the taller side. Um, so I'm, I'm using some basic guidelines based on what I've established before, height of the arms, overall height of the back, which is a little over four feet. Uh, just kind of establishing those basic ideas. So here we've got a 41 inch radius. Um, this line is 15 inches for the seat. This one is for the uh, arm rest. And then this is the height of the back. I made this at a 15 degree. It won't end up being that, but we'll use that as something of a guide. Cause again, we just need a couple things to work with. Cause this is a very curvy chair. So we, we just need a few things to, to start out with. I never would have thought there's the science behind, had never really considered that there's science behind proper rocker. There is, and there's math and, you know, math. That's, math. that's, that's a reason that Aaron has never wandered down this path. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. When this is kind of the rocker in a straight up position, obviously it, it, you know, when you're rocking, it's more like this and you're only ever, it's, it's great. Cause you have this great flowing rocker and you're only ever using just a few inches of it. Um, but I think this, if we say, you know, and this part's arbitrary, but if we say, let's just make the rocker there to there, then this is a uh, this is the basic framework, and that should provide a fairly comfortable rocker if we stay sort of in this. Nice. I, it's it, a it's a rocker for stickmen, stick yeah. persons. I'm gonna do a ten degree. That might be a better one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that ten degrees. But I'm not worry about. Oops. About being exact on there all right so and then there's a couple things I, I i will be curious as always um throw out suggestions please here's the kind of as i look at this um my assumption is it's certainly tilted towards the top i don't know if it's also tilted as it goes back but i would guess it probably is so we have you know, this whole assembly on the side, which might be aligned. In fact, I'll probably build it that way, but then it's going to be tilted in, you know, towards the top and tilted a little bit towards the back. I assume that we'll basically be able to lay that out and then just extrude it. And that will be nice and easy. And then this back slats will just have to sort of make one and then adjust as we pull them up. Um, same thing with the cushions. The arm rest would take a little bit of finessing. Um, and then the seat is just 
pretty straightforward because it has a cushion on it. So I don't know. What do you think, Jody? That's my thought process on how we'll approach this. Um, I've never designed or built a rocky chair, so it sounds very sound <laughs> to me. So is there a uh, is there a mathy, sciencey reason for why the back edge of the the rocker then kind of straightens out? Is that to keep you from accidentally over rocking? Um, it, I mean, you can imagine that if you, I, 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 I only have the experience with the, the two chairs I've built. You can imagine that if you're really rocking back, you know, by straightening it out, you do prevent going back too far, yeah. uh, quicker. I, I have not had an, uh, I've never run into an issue where like I was, you know, going so vigorously that that became a, an issue. But I, that's, that's what I think. It's been a long, more... it's been a long time since you were a 10 year old boy though. So I know too long, way too long. Yeah. yeah I always, I, I mean, I've seen plenty of rocking chairs that don't, that don't have it. I, I feel like it, that's, I think that's the kind of thing that makes me assume it was a Maluk was it always seems like his stuff had really long tails like that. Oh, uh, yeah. I could be wrong, though. I'm not an expert. But you play one on TV, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, I am going to make this a component and make it bigger so that we can work when we want on a bigger version. Uh, and let's start Let's start figuring out these curves. Now the way this goes, um, I let's just uh, let's just you know what I'm gonna do. Uh, move this up so that I can try to sketch. This may not work, but I'm going to uh, try to draw on this plane above here so I can sort of draw a little bit of a, an idea without it's going to try referencing down below but if I start up here and and don't link below then it should keep it up here so I just want to I just want to do some sketching and obviously we do this on paper normally but so the idea I think as we look at this we look at this chair so you have this one leg curving up and then the front is the the way that these come together is kind of interesting I think what's happening is this front piece is one piece it looks almost like this front uh, piece that supports the front of the arm is one but I think that's coming in and merging as is this piece down here they're just merging at an angle that it looks like any one of them could be the singular piece. Yeah, now, yeah. now I'm curious how they're all jointed together. If only Dave were here to logic it all out. <laughs> um, or maybe those are just like some Home Depot boards. You know, those are known for notorious for not being the straightest of things. Right. You just go to Home Depot and you find two warped boards that are warped in the same way. <laughs> That's right. Hammer you got together. lots to choose from. <laughs> I love that's that's going to be it. Using natural selection. From yeah, people. there you go. Gosh, no don't more design. Bending. Don't. You you shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't be manipulating that wood. It should be. It should be the way that God intended. Straight from Home Depot. Just, <laughs> uh, that's great. Of course, you've got to get it to also split like that. So, <clears throat> good luck with that. <laughs> All right. So, something. Oh, I better zoom out a little bit. It's coming up something like this and then curving back up like that. And then the front is coming from kind of the arm area. And curving down to the front here. I don't want to start from here or it'll start down below, but if I uh, 
something like that. And then from here, it's coming in, meeting about at the seat. And then that's the same here. And then this comes off something like that. Wow, that is ugly. But that's the it, idea. It it looks a lot like the, the design. Uh, <clears throat> that'll that'll give us a you just, you're just talking about the crudeness of your the way that they're all merging with each other? Yeah. All right, just making sure, you know, we got our heads wrapped around. Yeah, let's just start to build this up. So coming from here. The, that art comes off like that. You know what? Actually, I better lock this. Let's move this forward a little bit. Because that arches back. Something like that. And then. It's got a real Bezier feel to it. Yeah. Without the Bezier. <clears throat> um, yeah, let's go with that. Something like that. So we'll grab that and weld it up. Like a metal chair. Yeah. Tell us, Jody. I don't know, I'm going to diagram this out a little bit more, but tell us, uh, give us updates on your bench. You've been working on that really well. Been... I don't I mean nothing exciting. I, uh, I, I was kind of proud with it because the only way to put it together is I've got to flip it upside down and remove the legs because the base is all assembled. But I, uh, I did that yesterday and then I took the bench top upside down and put it on top of my upside down legs and it's a bench again. It's just not quite as stable. It's still really heavy. But no, I am. Uh, I'm just fitting it for the the end vice. And once I got that in place, I think, I think I could I could peg it together if I wanted to. I still have to put my leg vice together though. But if it's not, if it's not too hot in the morning, then I figure I can at least get one of my vices installed this weekend. That's really what my plan is: is to uh, work on my vice. <laughs> well, it sounds like I could just be sitting around drinking all day or something, right? Mm-hmm. No, I'm uh, I'm excited. It's, uh, well, so first of all, we did a live stream about the design for it way back whenever I started this thing. And I glued up the top, uh, like in the beginning or like in the first summer of COVID. And then I just sort of lost interest in doing any other stuff. Or I kept having things I didn't quite feel like doing and so I put the whole thing off but I managed to find some uh, find some motivation this spring and I've been working on it pretty steadily awesome. and every time I go out there or every time my wife goes out there to, to see it she asks does that mean that I'm going to start making real furniture soon so I need to take as long as possible I guess <laughs> oh Now you, just to put you on the spot, you're supposed to be working on a PARF guide for me. How's that coming along? I have not worked on that at all. Sorry. <sighs> wasn't very much of a put you on the spot. You just owned your owned your lack of progress. <laughs> uh, it's true. Um, but you're not ready for it, and so I, that's not a great excuse, but you nor I are ready to uh, actually build that into a workbench, so. Um, 
You should explain your process more. You, 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 you well, lost I, Jeff. Oh, well, as I, I, I'm looking at this. Okay, so we have the back leg, which looks like it uh, is a good... And this one, because in our sketch, and um, I should, you know, basically these were all crossing roughly where the upper... Uh, armrest and the seat were so I was adjusting this arc a little bit so that it meets you know uh, a little better where the front of the seat is and I'm keeping these for now as separate groups um, just to just to make it easier so that I just want to get the curves kind of dialed in and then then we can um, actually merge them together and create the the uh, surface that will extrude. So I don't know. I hope that may, that's that's kind of where my thought process is. And I'm going to up my segments on that one. And then I think this armrest is rough far enough forward. So we just need to create. It's funny as as you're doing this. My my main thought is like the that whole meme with the then draw the rest of the owl. Like this is literally just a stick figure, and then all of a sudden, at some point, you have to actually add meat to your to your sticks, make it look like a chair. Yeah, that's true. Um, and and for this one again, making these curves look like any one of these could be the curve that's coming in and out of this area. So. Something like that. And this one, something like that. And this one can curve back maybe to this point where it would then curve sort of straight off, straight away. That's going to be a very shallow curve. SketchUp might be like, no, it's too, too shallow. It's a straight line. Can work with that. That looks like a real chair now. I mean, it looks like a real chair skeleton. Something like that. Um, this and we need to get the rocker. Copy that and. Now I think we've got all these curves, so we can group them and paste that. And if I hide the rest of the model, make this curve nice. Um, yeah, how about that? That looks like it will serve as <clears throat> and I, again if we were to build this for the purpose of building it then this we, we might preserve some of these in different ways because this will be one piece that we're bending this will be one piece that we're building um, these two uh, building and bending these two will be bending differently but um, that so when you when you designed this for your previous well first of all did you design it the same the same way when you made either of your other rocking chairs uh, it, you you set the basic framework but I mean you can see that the this one is so different being a, a you know craftsman style chair with angular members that it was mostly yeah still getting the proportions of the seat and the rocker correct but then beyond that it was straightforward to be like okay it's just 90 degree turns yeah 
did you were you designing for each of the boards or did you just design the design the look of it and then go in after the fact and figure out how you're going to create your the actual pieces once you have the outline created then you know there's there's a bit of this one where you're like okay well create such and such a curve as it, as well as it looks and there's a bit of a how how big to make this gap or or this one um four inches i tend to i i build my st like if it as long as it looks close and looks like a, a a good gap then i tend to build to you know try not to build stuff that's three and nine sixteenths I don't know. Uh, do do we want to start the uh, the eye rolling out there about uh, empirical? <laughs> but anyway, to the nearest inch or to the nearest dimension. Um, so a little bit different process for sure. Simpler when you're using those methods. Uh, I think on this one, the curious part now will be we'll offset these um, in this way and how big to make those I'm going to start with uh, three quarters of an inch maybe one inch laminated I'm not sure if that will look too thick or not we'll try one so that's one offset this one this one so at this point you're not really even aware of what the sizes of things are you're just uh i i you're I, just kind of again with the look of it yeah um how, how wide is that and you know it's a pretty decent this back leg looks like it might be a little thicker and we don't have to make them uniform obviously so Maybe we make these smaller. So now that I've just done that, maybe you caught me just in time to be like, you know what? Let's let's make them a little bit smaller. Let's say I think let's go with point seven five, three quarter inch. But we'll make this back leg one inch, so it's a little bit more. Um, we could make the rocker more too, but um, oops. Should make that. Make that. Yeah, we'll make, uh, now this is weird. It's acting like we've got multiple. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, why? There's one piece, there's why did, I don't know why it does this right like it's selecting this it's acting like this is one segment or multiple I'll try welding it I don't know if that's gonna help us or not hopefully so okay and one you just had a, a CNC machine you just take a big slab of wood <laughs> you have it cut out that of shape Two halves, uh, and you just stick boards in the middle. <laughs> Although so much wasted, so much wasted wood. Yeah. Also, it would break. First time you use it, right? I guess it depends on. I don't know what what way would you orient the grain that the first time you lean back in one direction. Um, 
because if your grain is going this way so that your back is straight, then your rocker is going to have no strength. Are you you're using a different uh, shortcut shortcut display thing, aren't you? It's just throwing a little key in your corner. Oh, up here. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and if you uh, uh, if you're new joining us or haven't been around that much, first of all, super welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Also, don't use any of the keyboard shortcuts I'm using because none of them are the default. Um, sorry about that, but but we still had sometimes people asking that we uh, share that. So that's well, at least it lets us see that you're using shortcuts, which is is a concern. Tom is is doesn't feel like he's able to follow really what you're doing because you're just using so many shortcuts and he doesn't know what tools you're using. Uh, I apologize for that, although part of part of the the modeling that the live modeling is to try and knock something out in under two hours, and that's always kind of a challenge. So. Please, if there's specific questions, we can always pause and, uh, and try and answer those. Um, please let me know or let Jody know. Or somebody in the chat will answer because uh, we've got an awesome community. There's all kinds of people that may or may not, may or may not have an answer. Yeah. I'm going to try to cap all this off and see if we can create one surface out of this. Um, mostly what I've been doing is drawing arcs and then offsetting those arcs, selecting and offsetting them. Um, <clears throat> if you're very new to SketchUp, I would not suggest this is the first project you try and tackle. Stick <laughs> with st uh, stick with this version where you can draw some, some square and rectangle shapes. Um, it's of course, you know, you're like, but I want to build the other one. That's the one I'm more interested in. That's totally get that, but it's going to be an exercise in frustration if you don't sort of build up from kind of a base understanding of shapes and your square and basic shapes are going to be the good building foundation that you'll want to go from. Um, we, we definitely see that. And appreciate the the idea that hey, I want you know, teach me right away just how to build this one thing. And so sort of like you gotta you gotta build the foundation, or it's just gonna be frustrating. Here I'm. When you draw arcs, uh, if you're again new to SketchUp, what you need to understand is that everything in SketchUp is made up of straight edges. There are no true arcs. And so you can control the number of arcs to, to create more detail uh, or less detail because uh, controlling that number is an important kind of piece of not modeling something that's going to break your computer. But if I've drawn all of these things in the same plane, which should have done, I am now going to try to create one surface that we can pull up. And to do so, I need to um, erase any of these dividing pieces. And make sure that my surfaces are all capped off. So down here, got a little bit here. So Tom's then, curious what the benefit is of less detail. I'll show you a quick example. Um, all right, this is going to work for us. Uh, a quick note, like you can see how this is all acting as one surface where it shouldn't. If that's the case, you can just trace over uh, an edge. So I'm going to trace from endpoint to find another endpoint here. And you see how visually that changes. Oops that one and do this one uh, 
Um, when you would do less detail, we'll come back to this in just a moment. So let's do let's do a little detour here. It's a good question. This um, this chair. It may not be the type of chair that we are duplicating a hundred times in a room, uh, although a hundred of these <laughs> in a big old big old fireplace room. I don't know. Anyway, getting distracted. I'm going to create the default number over here of circles is 24 sides. So I'm going to create a default uh, So I've got 100 here because it did not change it, but that's okay. That will help. And then I'm going to create another one. I'm going to type 24 to change the number of sides before I draw this. Okay, so I've got 24 sided, which is default, and 100. And then I'm going to create a quick follow me example of creating a vase or bowl or glass or something like that. So we'll make a quick wine glass and it's not going to be super great, super pretty, but it'll serve our purpose. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> well, in the eyes of all beholding, this one won't be super great, <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be okay. Now, um, when I created this, each of these arcs by default is created with uh, 12 segments. Now they have different segments because they were overlapping and I've erased some of them, but essentially keep that in mind. So I'm gonna take that one and copy it. I'm gonna copy it to the center of this point here. And then I'm gonna use the follow me tool check out follow me with a lathe to create two versions of this. Okay, let's look at the hidden geometry here. This one you can see has far, far more uh, geometry. Now if I look at these really up close, you can see, you know, that this one has some segmentation and this one you really can't tell but you only have to zoom out this far before you can't tell which is which. I mean, maybe you're telling, you're saying, yes, I can. But again, you don't have to zoom out too far to say, you can't tell that this one, if I select this has, I mean, <laughs> just one glass has over 3000 entities. This one has 14,000. So now <laughs> when we make this a component, and and we do copy it around the room we're copying uh, you know you sort of exponentially start to create a, a level of geometry that is just completely unnecessary this is creating so much more geometry in your model it's making your model heavier it's making your computer have to just chug that much more to process that many more faces and display them. And there's no difference. So I hope this, this is the, the classic example of when um, you, you actually would turn it down. I, I would probably create this with even less. Maybe I'd go through here and say, we don't even need as many as we have here. We can get away with maybe seven. And this one, we only need I'm just throwing numbers, but it's it's not an exact yeah. science. Um, but if we it's, change, it just becomes a mess really yeah. fast, really really slows down your model. If we change the the number of sides on these arcs, that'll still be less. So now we've got a twenty five sided circle, and this many arcs yep. to create, and uh, it's far also less. worth worth noting that the complexity you have in your SketchUp model isn't going to change. The output. If you go and actually build your chair, going back to that as the example, it doesn't matter if you had a hundred-sided arcs for all of the curves in it, or 
you know, 24 sided. Yeah. So as a general rule, I did turn the, the arcs a little bit. And if we look at this one in particular, um, I might, I, I, I think I'll change this one because visually this will be large enough that that segmentation might show up a little bit, but I don't want to, I don't want to just be like, okay, I don't want any. So I'll just turn it up to 50. I don't need 50. Yeah, it looks like a beautiful curve, but I don't need that. So I'll just turn it up, say, to 14 or 15. Um, so again, it's it's not a science. It's not an exact thing. It's just visually, I'm looking at a few of these and saying, okay, this uh, this arc has six. That might be fine. I, uh, Jody was saying. You know, if it serves your purpose, then it's fine. This one I can't change because it's it's uh, the arc was broken, so it happens too. In any case, let's find out what, what happens. If we... Did you get everything? Yeah, did you get everything welded? You have you're showing hidden right now. I am showing hidden. Not everything is not welded, and you can see that in each of these um, edges that show up. Uh, but we can. Either hide those or soften them with the eraser tool. If I grab the eraser tool here and if I erase that, it would expose that because essentially if we look at the hidden geometry, I'm erasing an edge that's necessary. So I'm going to soften it by holding the option or B control key on PC. And that if I turn off hidden geometry, that keep that makes that transition between them smooth. Now I could just hide it. That's a, a an option for different circumstances, and that's by holding the shift key. But if I just hide it, and this one's not a good example, but let's use this one for example. You can see that edge is hidden. The geometry is still there. Versus if I soften it, then it tries to visually make those two surfaces read like they're they're part of the same surface so in this case i, I want to soften these edges so visually they'll look like they're the same so I just hold down the option key again control on pc and soften a few of these this transition is a little abrupt but we're going to keep going anyway. We could go back and adjust uh, maybe I don't want to do that one. But okay, so let's make that a component and bring a copy of it over here and turn it up and see if this looks like a rocking chair that's going to be comfortable. I need, a, I need a false ground plane to see where this is. So bring it down and then let's just act like uh, we're rocking it back a little bit. Perspective back on. And this is just a temporary, but I'll move this one up to, let's see, right about here. And use the scale tool to kind of get this group roughly where we want and I think uh, that needs to be a bit wider I think um, and these are sloping we know that but roughly I don't know 14 inches wide or something no yeah, looks really really right. narrow it does like look my butt's narrow. bigger than 14 inches it does look narrow. 
So, you know, that's part of the process of saying, well, now we need to rotate these out by a few degrees, let's say five each. And it does Yeah, and, and if you looked at this and were like, um, you know what, this is getting there, but maybe the front of this uh, sticks out too far. And so maybe we'd want to come back and say, you know what, I want to terminate this now here. And and then we need to go back and redraw some of what we just did, right? We'd, we'd, we'd create the arc from there and keep going. We won't do that in the interest of time. We're going to live with what we've got, but that's part of the part of what this lets you do, right? Um, this will work for us, though. So, I'm thinking if this is more common for a for a width. What's that? It's more com 20 inches is more common for a width. Definitely oh, looks like let's, um, let's make this a uh, good idea. I'll make that 18 inches and then we'll move this to the outside ish. That does look better. That looks proportionally uh, more in the ballpark. We can scale this back one just to That looks, little, that looks a little more manageable. All right, so this. Oh, um, here's a here's a piece that I didn't do because we want these mirrored, uh, and I did not do that. Let me do that now. Otherwise, as we experiment with our arms, <laughs> won't look right at all. I'm going to. I wasn't I wasn't careful when I rotated them out either. So did I? Let's see. I rotated that five degrees. Yep. So let me straighten that back out and then move a copy. And uh, there's multiple ways to mirror in SketchUp. Scale tool is uh, sure there. What's that? There certainly are. <laughs> we are there. Oh man, scale tool is the one I use most commonly. But there's also some really good plugins. Scale tool, you can just grab the center piece here and type negative one. Scale it to negative one. Um, I don't know if it's right click. I um, there's a TIG mirror. There's some other ones. I think I've got installed. Well, we'll just use the, the old method. Oh, you know, it's funny. I didn't even notice it, and Lawrence didn't either, that there's actually a cushion in this. He was asking if you were going to be adding the little uh, scoops for your for your butt to sit in. Oh, I'm not going to yeah, carve design that actually even have it. it has yeah. cushions. Yeah. In fact, the cushions in this thing are a big part of its design. It's like, if you were just to look at the non, look at it without cushions, that seat doesn't look comfortable. Back doesn't look that comfortable. Right. You'd, you'd want to carve out the butt scoops. <laughs> butt scoops. 
Yeesh. Fine. So you're gonna so you're gonna model cushions. Oh yeah, that's what you said. You were possibly using. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll break out artists. Tool set. Yeah. So I've got that. If I toggle on the old perspective here. Okay. Um, now this is. Uh, I'm gonna do um, because this is a component because we just mirrored it. I can jump into here, and I'm going to group inside this component uh, our our assembly. Select these and rotate them inside the component. Um, that's not always recommended because, right? But if I do, I get exactly the same both ways. But I'm rotating this and now I'm rotating it off the axis of what the component is. Now we can reset the axis and change it. So, but just that's why it's not always recommended is because you're, you're changing the geometry's relation to the axis, as opposed to if I rotated this uh, outside here, then I've rotated the whole component and kept the geometry and the axis of the component still aligned. So I am just with that caveat, I'm going to go ahead and do this inside just so that I have the same version. Um, but just something to keep in mind. And what do we say? Five degrees. That, does that look about? Seems about not too dramatic, but that seems to look all right. I'd sit in it. Hey, if if Jody says you do it, that's enough for me. If I if I were to jump off a cliff, though, I'd jump with you, buddy. Nice, nice. I'm not going to do that. Oh. There's no cliffs around here anyway. <laughs> oh, right. So same thing here. Um, let's rotate this just slightly in. We'll just do three degrees. That that might be too much. Well, we can also move them out. So at this point, let's move it back out by an inch. What does that give us up here? I don't know. That might be enough. That's still nine inches. Maybe that's... So let's instead rotate that by a little bit less. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Andy that it still feels, still feels narrow. Yeah, it does. I agree. Now, is it na more narrow at the back? You do have it canted out too right i do so it's five degrees canted towards the front which i think uh i will change that a little bit and it's two degrees canted towards the top so let's change the how much is canted towards the back by just a little bit um so that was five let's bring it back say just two degrees and that let's let's go with that okay so that meant we did three degree cant towards the back and a two towards the top and that seems like it would work uh, and as always we can of course widen it as well but I think this is probably about wide enough. The front of this is 18 inches. Um, that, that should be plenty wide. Oh, now that seat looks way too flat, though. Well, it surely does. Also, this seat is not aligned because we tilted these back. Um, from here, it should be there. So this, this needs a, what do we do? Oh, I don't, I don't know that I, 
You don't even know what you did. You changed I it all. Did, I don't know. It's all busted. Great. We can make this align, though, with these. Uh, I made those a little higher, though. Oh, what have I done? I don't know. We're going to go with 10. Not that way. Fine. Negative 10. <laughs> that looks that looks more better. I'll be right back. I gotta fill up my water. <laughs> All right. You know you don't have the industrial size Santa mug. I think this is funny. If Aaron were here, he'd be giving me a hard time for like. I created this version over here that I thought we'd be modeling on, or not. I've got. You know, got the the graveyard building, got the pieces building. <laughs> Here's the other reason why, if we look at this, we can see how the version that I left here, which I left here because if we leave this flat, then it makes it easier to work on along with the axis, but we rotated this inside the component, therefore it's not flat anymore. So another reason why it's not necessarily a good practice. Obviously we can come back and tweak and fix, but we're just gonna keep going forward. So um, Lawrence Lawrence is impressed that you're you're mathing where where Aaron doesn't do that. I'm not mathing. I mean thank you, but eh, you what were, are you talking about? You're, you're used you are used typing in numbers. Your percentaging, which is <laughs> sort of like mapping. Okay, I mean, like I say, thanks. I don't, I don't consider myself mapping, but so this. Let's make this curvy too. Let's come around. Something like that. What are our arms going to look like? Let's move that in. Oh, specifically, you worked out that uh, 10 degrees should actually have been negative 10. That's just SketchUp being stubborn. Yeah, I feel like that's that's a whole lot of what the design process is. Is uh, you just plug in a number. If that number didn't work, try a different number. <laughs> right. But here we go. That's that's a little promotion, right? That is uh, that's the beauty of SketchUp. Is you can easily just tweak that. It's not quite parametric, but you can still do cool stuff. Now this is an interesting. What's what's that? Uh, um, I I know when I built my rocker, um, the arm like joining it into here. I'm, I'm curious. I don't think we get much clues based on we don't have any other photos of how this was. Okay, these are joined in together, and then this. Um, could just be a loose tenon that's happening there or something. I'm not sure. So how much of how much joint work did you did do in the ones that you actually built? Like how much of them is held together by screws and how much is held together by wood? Well, my friend, as somebody I know whom prefers not to use screws, there's only I only use screws uh, two of them one on each side where the arm joins here and that was as a I also have a loose tenon um, down here where the seat or the legs joined the uh, rocker those are done by a, um, a dowel all of the joinery on the chair is typically tenons or loose tenons um, mortise and tenon so it's all joinery 
Nice. I approve. I thought of a uh, an actual definition for like an acceptable in my brain definition of what fine woodworking is the other day, and now mm. I I can't remember it, of course. Oh, because uh, come on. You know something something to do with your willingness to hand it to someone else or. Okay, so well, this is great. Let let's get some opinions out there. And now I, I I'm. You know, this is a this is a fun topic uh, that nobody I don't think gets to claim full authority on being the the arbiter of. I mean, Jody claims he is, and let's give him that because his ego. But for the rest of us, do tell what is your definition of fine furniture? How where do you split that difference? If somebody builds something with you know pocket screws and paints it, and it's very functional and looks good that's but that's what it was actually was the if you if you paint it then that would be like the big thing if you if like the the end result if the way that you finish it is to paint it and cover up all of that wood then that in my by my view sort of paints the the notion that it's <laughs> not a not fine woodworking at that point if you're finishing it with a stain or a or a wax rather than a or an oil rather than paint but now, now we'll see what everybody else says. But I, I, I don't know. Just I'm not to... going to. I'm not going to attack anybody who paints their stuff. But good, like a good piece of furniture looks yes, better as will. as a wood than it does as painted. <laughs> I'm going to spend too long just dinking around on the shape of this arm because I, I don't like what it where it's at, and I'm not sure where I want it to be at. So apologies that I'm just. But yeah, so I, I'd be very curious. I, I, I find that kind of a fascinating idea for anybody who builds furniture, or at least uh, everybody's got an opinion, right? But anybody who wants to weigh in on what you think fine furniture is and, um, or you know, how much distinction that actually makes, who knows, but what, 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 what anybody chiming in with a... A definitive like oh no my my version is the only version keggy's is probably pretty accurate it said fine work woodworking is when it looks fine especially not in my house but that's <laughs> see that's a real joke because there's no fine furniture in my house <laughs> yet at some point at some point i'll make something that i think de is deemed that but there's more more particle board than i care to admit in my house <laughs> I, I I think it's interesting, like, um, I mean, who, which of us could could say based on, like, there's so many styles and techniques um, that I have not built that to be like, well, this is or isn't, you know. Right, and, and I feel like there's always sort of qualifiers, like you've seen those, this sort of Dr. Seuss looking chest of drawers that that one guy makes mm -hmm. you know it looks like it's got little arms it's standing with its its hip off to the side and it's just all curvy and playful but it you know he most of this like he paints the drawers but the side itself is all like real wood it looks silly and playful so is it still fine furniture probably i love that guy's stuff plus the technique to make all of that he's using a lot of technique so it'd be hard to argue that Judson, what's his name? Judson, I think, is his last name. We talked a little bit. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, this is, I've got an example here. Like, playful. <laughs> I, just, I just happen to have one open. Uh, it, you yeah, see, that's the main one I usually think of. Well, um, both of these have wood texture, but he does a lot with painting. Very, very colorful um, painting, which, so I don't know, is no, uh, who, who else, uh, I, I'm curious, come on everybody, throw your opinion out there, even if you don't feel like you have one, what, what, uh, is fine furniture even a, uh, term that is useful, or is it a term that somebody is using, maybe just to uh 
upsell. Uh, anybody want to dump on it? I don't know. Uh, I'm still curious. I need to make this longer. I think I think that uh, it's probably a vague enough question. Keggy thinks if Norm Abrams made it, then it's probably fine furniture. <laughs> but Norm Abrams makes a lot of stuff with screws. I mean, he makes traditional stuff too, right. but he's he doesn't shy away from screws and stuff. Just, again, um, Right, and I, I think that there probably are plenty of cases for, for screws. I definitely, uh, my my perspective has shifted over the years since the first time we had that debate. I still prefer to look at stuff that has you know, nice visible joinery. Yeah. Let's see here. Got like that's half of the half the allure of this thing you're modeling now. That the source picture has got, like you can see how each of those. The wood is hidden, like connecting to the rest of it in most of the most of the images. Yeah. I. I am not convinced that that is the right shape. In fact, I still don't like it. But um, I don't know how much longer. We can endure dinking around with it, so we're going to have to <laughs> right? move on. The, there's <laughs> a certain aspect of design process that is a reason you don't have people designing things in live streams. I know. <laughs> Indeed. Colin used the Google and said the actual answer is fine furniture is made with top quality materials. And Keggy pointed out that Chippendale's furniture is made with screws. So how, how, how judgmental can you be? I don't know. Uh, I can't be quite judgmental. <laughs> Lenny said the arms look fine to them. Okay. Thanks. Cause we're, we're going <laughs> to, I, I don't know what I, uh, I don't like them. We're going to move on. Do not like them. This is the beauty of components, right? You can later on, you can go back, you can pull that thing out as a component. You can you can make a couple versions and swap them out. Yeah. In theory, if you're a glutton for punishment. Yeah. What happened to my life? I was glutton for punishment. I mean, that's what live modeling is, right? Uh, making as many mistakes as possible in front of your peers and friends. <laughs> I mean, that's that's why, why we're all here, really. Make fun of you. Love it. All right. Um, two things from here. We need to st start establishing the back, and then we better get to some cushions or we're going to run out of time. I'm going to try, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try something, make a copy of our component here and scale it way up. I want to see if we can use um, Fredo's corner tool to give us some softening on these edges. Um, based on some of these corners and, and I just, I don't know if it's going to work, but let's, let's find out, shall we? So uh, let's just brute force it to start with, and then we'll see what we go from there. Um, I'm gonna so we've got this and our settings offset to um,
that's going to be too small. Let's uh, let's play around with this a little bit. Let's. Um, why did it say two? It's no good. I would think that that would get us close. Doesn't like it. Let's try one. Don't you love doing this live? I do. I love whenever things pop up with a completely different interface in SketchUp. It just messes with my uh, with my brain. Yeah. Uh, four segments is not too many. I cannot tell. Um, you know what? I'm going to escape out. I'm going to select just <laughs> just one you're, side. You're of this. using. Yeah, you're using extensions, and I'm looking at the title of that thing up there. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Lawrence, for noticing that. <laughs> That's a good call. Um, cocky. You're cocky. I know. Curvy. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a That's a good call. All right, let's try this again. There we see. Yeah. Okay. I, when, once Lawrence noticed it, though, he almost gave Hardy, gave Keggy a heart attack. <laughs> what I'm trying to think. I mean, Aaron has a uh, has pretty famous example. I don't remember when I like really lost something, and we just sort of had to bail out completely. Hopefully you won't have to. Okay, this is a legit question. I don't actually know the answer. Abraham wants to know the major difference between Fredo corner and round corner. Do you, do you have a good... <clears throat> like, I, I'm always curious whenever extension developers create something and someone else creates one that's basically the same thing. Well, Fredo, used, Fredo created both, and I, I'm. this is going to be a bad example. Round... I may not even be saying this correctly. This is his updated version, um, and Fredo's plugins, many of them, including this one, are now paid plugins, though completely worth it. <clears throat> Round Corner, I think, was the, the original version. Um, I actually still have it and like it. Fredo Corner, do I have Round Corner? Um, what he did, updating to Fredo Corner, is he resolves the actual corners differently. Um, so there's, uh, I, I think he just used a bit of a, a different way to resolve. So if I take this one and I use, uh, let's make it four and Inch. Let's make it bigger so we can see it. If we look at the way that this corner is resolved, um, I think it should be different if we look over here. So if we do this one, do what should be basically the same, eight, four segments. Um, notice how this one... I don't know if I'm going to, is this going to, yeah. So it's subtle. Uh, oops. But the way that these meet up and are resolved on the corners are different. And I think that the newer way helps resolve some, uh, some corners that were difficult. Now, again, I, I'm speaking way over my head, but it's just, it's the resolution of how that geometry is resolved. Resolution? It's the, anyway. I, so it, it has something to do with that, as in like, it's not just that he made it a, pay, a paid plugin. He actually changed how corners resolve. That's the difference. Okay. In some cases, like I say, I, I keep both around because sometimes 
Uh, this other does kind of a simpler job and I'll try both. Um, All right. So it mostly it's back end stuff that you don't, most people don't actually even see. Yeah. They, they still both work really well. Although, and I think some, uh, everybody, some people know this. I made this a much larger version because if you're going to add super detail into corners like this, and you do it on a on a small version. SketchUp just doesn't resolve that well. Doesn't like that. So, but if you do it on a big version, that's a copy of the component. It's still here on our other, but um, it just works better. It's just one of those things. Now we're far enough away. I didn't do the inside version here. I'm just going to take this um, because we've done so much twisting and turning. I don't know if this is going to work. If this is still on axis or if uh, I think it did good. So Lawrence and Colin think that the new corner looks like it uses quads. Actually, I think it does. Yeah. Respect them, yeah. What setting did I use on this? I don't know. Um, it was... Okay, our inside outside has a bit of a different corner radius, but we're gonna roll with it anyway. Okay, uh, <laughs> actually, thanks for the reminder to save, but that actually worked out of the gate. I was not uh, completely expecting that it would, but uh, okay, very cool. Let's keep going. <laughs> Sweet. Exactly. Uh, I love whenever I, I'm doing something expecting it to fail and it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we, this is a simple curved slat back here, and then we just need to adjust them for our chair. Um, just to let's group that and bring it up here. When you're drawing arcs in free space, um, they can get finicky. So if you create yourself a, a surface, or does this start down here somewhere? So this will give me a better turn in geometry on better surface to start with. Um, actually, I'm just going to use this point right here since it be a nice point on either side that we have to work with and something of a gentle a gentle slope like that will do fine All right. Um, now we can uh, pull this up and rotate it into position. Or we could um, use, again, Fredo's uh, joint push pull to pull it in that direction that we wanted. But we should be able, these are not that big. We should be able to just take this and rotate it. The, some of you will notice right away by pulling it straight up, since these are canted, um, we're going to run into this issue where we're pulling it into the, the other geometry. So we need to pull it up and resolve that. Um, visually, we won't be able to tell and we're just gonna let it be now because again, I've been long winded and we're running out of time. 
Just shut up already. I know. Shut up and model. No kidding. All right, make that a group. And you see old rotate. Why do you let me ramble so, Jody? Uh, I just want to see if you're going to like dig a hole, dig yourself into a hole. <laughs> Usually so. I wonder, I think we can uh, get away with just copying this up and scaling it down. Again, that wouldn't necessarily, if we wanted to build this as a reference for how we were making these, then this would probably be a specific height. And when we're using scale, we're going to be messing with, with that height. So we take some more time and preserve that. But in our case, I think we're just going to keep going. Before I do that, though, I am going to grab this, grab our... Uh, Now, we didn't scale this one up, so this one will need to be something like 0.3. No, still doesn't like it. All right. Usually, you can grab the whole thing. Uh, we'll go back to just grabbing the top and bottom and seeing if that will work for us. It just doesn't like previewing at that. I don't know why. Let's say 0.3, that's bigger than uh, that'll do. We only probably need about two. Get a little bit of a curve there. Same thing down here. Just do the same, hopefully. So Brad's comment was that the that plugin makes it look like if you're like you're using a router, the way that it manipulates the edges of the corners of your board rather than other stuff. Totally. Like Which I, I feel is... like I could pick a router bit to match what what you're using there. And and that's how kind of you do this, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. You like is this a uh... 3 eighths inch or a metric equivalent router bit. Nice. So I'm going to copy. I don't let's let's uh, let's look here real quick. Um, so we've got sort of pairs of these starting all the way up, going all the way up. Um, we'd want to space those somewhat evenly. which means let's pull our reference back here um we could just array it vertically and then move it back into place right we could do something like this where we say <laughs> but uh, we, we need to do some tweaking. So instead, I'm going to take this guy, and if this is the, the, I I don't know about you, Jody. I find myself when we're doing this, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know about, and I find myself talking out loud, like my my internal thought process. Yeah, it's uh, it sounds so silly and boring and like. Uh, I don't think anybody just goes up and does a thing without sense. muttering to themselves to some degree. Right, a lot of muttering. So that is something like what we need to do. 
So let's tweak that to uh, so that spacing will keep and we want to put one right here. So I will copy and then just test if I do uh, four divided, five divided. Looks like five. That that spacing in between might be too narrow. Uh, but actually, it looked close. So I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit to give us a little more room and spacing between. Yeah, this is this is this is the um, this is how NASA works, right? This is why I don't work at NASA. I'm like, well, I don't know. This, this is it right here, huh? Yeah. Move it a little bit it's here. Good. Move it a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, there's not not a lot of room for happy little clouds in your design process. There's a lot of room for happy little cloud. There's there's not a lot of room for make this point zero 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 to precision. <laughs> I guess I, I guess I presume happy little cloud to mean I'm being very ad hoc here. Okay. Numbers not allowed. All right, this, I mean this component just so that we get sort of a, a visual. Okay. Okay. That's four. That's five. We're going to go with five. Everybody okay with five? I love it. And if we wanted to, because we made this component, we can take this and move it down just a little bit, give us a little more space in between, but that's the idea. That's the idea. Okay. Yeah, Jody, you're like, you gotta love it. Get get a move on. <laughs> you got got no choice. Get how many uh, what does the real chair have? How many did it have? Uh One, two, let's three, find four, out. five. Five of the top ones thicker than the others. So I guess it would be ten Yeah. Ten slats. Yeah, but we'll just we'll We'll do this. I want, um, I wonder, I'm going to try, we'll see if this works. I'm going to copy, I'm going to cut these, drop them into the component that would give me my spacing. And then ungroup these so that I can then we'll tweak them from there. You know what? That looks like such even spacing. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do it anyway. But uh, another area where maybe some more tweaking is is uh, is needed here. But we'll just keep going. As is always, the case futzing around with stuff is is great creatively, but it gets a little uh, a little tedious when yeah. you're just watching someone else do it. We're gonna... Ah, why is it copying? Did I, I, I must have made multiple copies of that one. Of all of them. What?
think. I feel like there's a, a missed missed opportunity for SketchUp to have noises whenever you have uh, have something snap to a face like that. <laughs> Although <clears throat> you have heard the SketchUp, why don't you explain to anyone who not most people won't have seen it the SketchUp arcade machine and like it is oh, fun geez. for a while, but then you're like. Oh, then the, the novelty wears off. So, I don't know, like five or six years ago, we had uh, Eric Schimmelfennig, one of our one of our friends, long time long time user, uh, actually design and build a an arcade machine. Like, you know, when you go to the arcade, you've got got the screen in there. This thing's got a handful of buttons on the sides. It does have a keyboard as well. Does it have a joystick or does it just have a mouse? Or it has a, uh, a I wheel. I don't remember a, if it had a, a joystick. Ball. I don't remember. I but inside of it, mouse. it's like he's he's he had mapped a bunch of the keys to whenever certain things happen, it makes noises. Or when you do the right thing, it actually emits fog. Um, and this thing was, was taken to our different trade shows. And anybody working a trade show with this thing would soon learn to hate hate them hate the device because it could get so loud especially whenever you did the the thing to make the the fog so it was it's a really fun idea but one that well first of all i haven't even seen it in two years now so <laughs> i presume it still works i'm sure it'll well i'm expecting it'll probably be at, at the 3d base camp in vancouver but who knows who knows yeah it it it, it totally like as a novelty item and a super fun for a little bit, but then you can just imagine every arcade sound. I, I mean, you, if you're in an arcade, an old school arcade, and kind of the, the ambiance sound around you, that can be fun and nostalgic. But this thing, uh, you know, it's got eight sounds or something, and every new person that walks up is just popping the... Yeah, it got wow. It got so old. Okay, what other stories we got? Because I've just got to work my way down, down this thing. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm working am... out important questions coming from my wife about how much chicken feed we need to order. Oh, it matters. Well. Okay, you know what? Oh, just in the interest of, we really are running out of time here. Um, I'm gonna cheat, and some of our some of our stuff here isn't uh but it's hidden inside the leg so we're gonna keep on going now this one we're just going to simply throw a curve on here and, and add a cushion to it Let's just cut it in half and throw it into our component. So, paste in place. And, um, this is uh, floating in midair. Uh, I know we're going to get called That's out nice. on That's, that. Those are some of the, the trickiest uh, joints to actually do in woodworking. <laughs> so They do keep the weight down, though. Yeah. The the magic joints. If you get that mm -hmm. spell wrong, oh, <laughs> man, you have to start when all Guardium, over again. I don't even know. I don't, I don't speak any Harry Potter. <laughs> We 
Cardium. Dixiosa. Oh, Lord has a great idea. You just assemble it in zero G. That way you got to use it in zero G. You're totally right. That's brilliant. All right. Lawrence is on tap for next week. Okay. So cushions. Um, we're we're going to have to wing it here. Um, you know, they look fairly rounded and on the top. So, uh, I am not so we're gonna employ artisan here because only because we've used Tom Tom's vertex tools a few times I'm not an expert in either version so we're just gonna do what we can do here in a short amount of time let's a quick primer if you've never used artisan um, you need to group your geometry first and I'm going to show, I will select this, deselect that, and use follow me to create a chamfer on the top and one on the bottom. Select, deselect, follow me. And just to show, so if I take this and click on this icon, it's going to use that original geometry as a um, shell that we can still manipulate so if I select this and move it you'll see underneath the geometry is affected um, if I select multiple pieces and back here it's it's doesn't like how this is uh, resolving but let's go back to our original one and in this version our cushion Actually, let's just put these together. And before we get rid of this, let's actually use it and create a, some geometry. Now there's interior faces here. So I'm gonna select this and use the um, TomTom's solid inspector. That will delete internal faces. So that's an easy way to get rid of that but now if we click here we get sort of you know we just get this sausage <laughs> but we can turn the iterations up and then we can say you know what let's take these faces and move them forward and it will create, you know, that version for us. Let me, let's actually move them back a little bit. This gets into the realm of, if we look at our hidden geometry here, of like, you should try to understand and work with quads um, or cl keep clean meshes. I'm not like this. This is a whole version of modeling that is uh, takes a lot of practice that I haven't done. But we can create the basic uh, geometry of this, and um, you know what? Let's. First of all, let's just flip it around, make it a little bit thinner. And then if we take and we turn this iteration up, let's say one more, we create a lot more geometry for us to work with. And then I'm going to explode this because that interior, the way that Artisan works, that interior one you can see is locked, but these are linked. So I'm going to explode this. And As I look at all the geometry that this is creating, I think back to when you were scoffing at the idea of creating a circle <laughs> with too many arcs. 
This is All why right. you don't want to make a complicated circle. Is because when you get to the cushion part, your models are going to be too big, too heavy to use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if we want to give this a little more, you know, uh, personality, or it, it's a, it's not going to be this undulating. This is uh, these artisan has some of these great landscaping tools. If we look in here, though, um, I could use some of these sculpting tools and just to show what we can do with this, I'll, I'll up it up a lot and we could sculpt this and make it really look, you know, less uniform and more interesting. That's a little much. So let me undo that and turn the, uh, the arrow keys will change the radius and the kind of strength of the tool. So I'm going to turn the strength of this kind of down sort of make this just a little bit. It's kind of hard to see sometimes what you're doing, but anyway, if we take this Throw it back here. Let's see how it looks as our cushion. I'm curious how they how they actually mount them to that. There's a little uh, a little thing that velcros over each of the pairs, or that's my assumption. Place. Yeah, there's there's straps back there that that either velcro or or buckle or some way. Uh, that definitely seems like. Yeah, I've, I've had too many too many seats with cushions where you tie them in the back, and that's 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 just not. I don't feel like that would work well in this setup. They just don't work that great. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, so, in the interest again of sort of trying to get us something, we we need to curve this a little more. So we need to come in back to our original model right here and be like, you know what, this uh, looks more like this. If we were to create another one, and you know, we could create it in place for better results, something like that. Uh, but Squish it, fluff it, get it in shape. Exactly. <laughs> that is the idea. And we did get close to something that looks vaguely like it. So yay for that. I don't know. Um, anybody have other suggestions on how they might approach this or questions on uh, any of uh, the pieces? This, uh... I got nothing. It looks looking good to me. 
Let's see. We'll copy these uh, everybody else has. up and down, and I want to do a quick, you know, make it a little bit unique. Well then, while I finish this off, anybody got good weekend plans? Already talked about mine. I'm sure that I'm sure that somebody playing along at home has got better plans than more exciting plans than us. I should hope so. It just takes three to five seconds for them to respond. <laughs> So these are all components. I need to make them unique if I'm going to kind of change them up a little bit. Maybe you want to leave them as components if it if gets the idea across. And you don't want to have to go through and. That was a little off. Okay, it looks comfy enough there. All right, all right. That all bottom right. one needs to be extra cushy for your for your lumbar. Oh, you are right about that. We're gonna, we're gonna pop these two out a little bit. Although maybe that was all built into the design of the actual wooden back. A little bit with the whole curvy curve, but let's make this one unique, this one unique, a little little tweaky tweak. That's a technical term. I'm a fan of technical terms and tweaking. The positive, the most positive context of the word tweaking, though. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, uh, we're just going to take one of these and copy it for our seat without the time to kind of create one that would look better. This, uh, this will do for us. That'll do.
This is where I should have known the angle that I made those others, but oh well. That's why you keep a, a handy little notepad next to your computer, like me. Oh. And then forget to write it down. True story. Um, I don't know if uh, there's a plugin called FFD that creates a frame around this. That would that would help do this. There's a, oh maybe I would. Um, can I use? Let me see if I can do Fredo scale. Does Fredo scale? Would that work on this? Um, box tapering. Oh, I have a license, but I guess I don't have it put in here. <laughs> Never mind. Bummer. Again, we tweak this uh, a little bit better, but okay. Ah, if we had <laughs> a bit more time, maybe looks, go in and. That looks pretty legit. Add some textures, I, but it feels like it has really long legs. It's not a criticism, it's just sort of the forced perspective. Yeah, it could be that. Lighten this up a little bit just for some contrast. Okay, we sort of got there. Time. <laughs> nice. 158. You got two minutes to spare. Now you can start playing around with shadows and creating your, your perfect thumbnail or whatever it is you do. Who could know? Yeah, so uh, super thanks. I mean, this uh, <laughs> thanks for for getting dragged along in a winding, iterative bit of a design process that you know people who are not entirely sure what's going on. But I don't know. I I that I would definitely uh, enjoy seeing how comfortable that was, seeing uh, how well that works. Yeah, I think it, it I think it went pretty well. Yeah. Let's see here. Where's our as you say? Let's throw a little, little sketchy render on here. Uh, Matt's blessed it. Said he's put he put his butt on that. Oh man. Listen, everybody, you do not know, don't appreciate what, what uh, high praise that is. How legit. <laughs> uh oh, I ran this and I think I need to put a, uh, something on the, the bottom here. Interrupted, I broke everything. Try it once more. See what happens. Yeah, but uh, stay safe out there. Everybody have a, a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. I believe next week, Aaron is going to come back, and he is. Um, if you haven't seen, he's modeling the SketchUp booth that we um, take to trade shows. We introduced a new booth this year for anybody who happened to be at AIA and uh, it's pretty interesting fresh so, new design yeah fresh fresh so fresh so that's pretty interesting and um, he's going to take a photo and model from that photo see how far you can get we will get a lot farther than this <laughs> maybe. maybe we'll see tune in next week right now 
<laughs> but otherwise, thanks for hanging out. Thanks, Jody. Always a good time. Thank, thank you, Tyson. Um, all right, everybody. See you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>